Hi guys, this is How to Reinvent. I'm gonna go through the steps of what to do once you're at reinvent. Uh, in my previous video, which I'll link down below, I pretty much gave you instructions on how to uh, register for the event, uh, the best way to reserve your courses. And so now we're gonna talk about what to do once you are there. First tip, fly into Vegas the Sunday before. I, it's pretty nerve wracking to go there the day of because most of the events start Monday at 8 a.m. Flights are unpredictable. You hope that you get to where you need to be on time. You hope there's no delays, but if you're in a place with bad weather, especially in the first week of December, it is in your best interest to go the Sunday before. Now, please know that they do allow you to um, get your pass for reInvent at the airport. There's usually this huge AWS reInvent sign and a whole bunch of kiosks and things of that nature. Uh, please take that time if you can, because you'll most likely be waiting for your luggage. Go ahead. Uh, you need your ID, uh, your QR code that they give you when you uh, register for the event. So please save that. Okay. Save that. Uh, I will do a screenshot of it before you get there. So that, that way it's easy to find. I see people on their phones trying to dig through their email to find something that they signed up for in June, now in December. So it's in your best interest to make your make an AWS folder in your mail account, put it there, and then also when you're there, screenshot it in case your battery is low or your internet service doesn't work so the QR code doesn't load. Like I said, best interest, screenshot it. Uh, you can register right, you can pick up your creds right there at the uh, at the airport. Uh, then you get to your, like I said, please do this a Sunday before. Doing it that Monday morning is really rough. And then also, you can't really check into these hotels until around four uh, without paying a fee. So you can either walk around with your luggage. Maybe you have enough time to drop it off at the concierge and say, hey, I have a room here. Uh, can you guys just hold my luggage until I can check in? You may be able to finesse that, but it's going to be cutting it pretty close, especially since... You may have a hotel down here, but your first class is up here. That's going to be a headache to get to. Just being honest with you guys. Uh, so Monday, usually the classes end around, looking at my old schedule, usually the classes end around 4 o'clock on a Monday. And that is because they have the uh, expo. Uh, they, they, op they open the doors for the expo that first day. And then they have what's called a Monday Night Live. It is, <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot going on. Whew, it is it is a lot going on, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, Monday Night Live is like, hey, we're AWS, we're great. These are like two really cool things that we're gonna introduce for you guys. They introduced one year um, a Deep Racer they, they introduced Deep Composer, um, the Robot Maker. So they try to introduce something new on Monday Night Live and get everybody pumped up. Uh, the Expo Hall is pretty much a place where companies sell themselves to you. They're not selling anything, uh, they, but there are a lot of giveaways. It's, it's literally just insane. I'm about to find the picture that I took. So... That was all my swag. Now, please understand that if you look here, that's my TV console. And you can see the pops on top. That lets you know how big that console is if you know anything about pops. So all this down here is all swag. So just to kind of give you an idea of what I got. I got 14 bags, 6 hats, 1 pair of glasses, 11 pins. These type of pins. Two food items, two screen cleaners, 13 pairs of socks, two notebooks, 13 shirts, one hoodie, one beer cozy, one bracelet, 13 toys, one bottle opener, two pins like the kind that you wear, uh, one phone mount, one charging pad, one sanitizer, one car air freshener, one packet of mints, one set a one set of charging cables, one keychain, one, one, one water bottle, one water, 36 stickers, and two books. Now, when it comes to swag. Just to let you know, some companies give away swag like Oprah giving out cars. You get swag, you get swag, you get swag, everybody gets swag. That's typically Capital One. 
Capital One know what you're there for. They don't play around. They are pretty much just tossing shirts, scanning badges, and that's it. Yes, please understand that anytime you go to a company, they want to scan your badge. Why? Because all your contact information information is on that badge. It has your uh, your company, your name, your email address, probably your phone number too. They scan it. They get information from you. You get swag from them. Now, there are some companies that will make you work for that swag. One company is like, hey, you have to visit three of our smaller booths plus attend a 15-minute talk session. And then you have to take an Instagram photo with our huge, massive robot. You need to ask yourself, is it worth your time? Because if you only have an hour on the expo floor and you have to see as many companies as possible for your for your company, uh, you might not have time to do all that. And it's, it's nothing against them. I know that they have a limited amount of the good stuff. And they're trying to make sure that you they really get you in there and explain who they are. They're not just trying to give out stuff. And, and I get it. I understand, but it's up to you on how much time you have. There are some booth that has, has, has games. There's some that had a magician. Uh, my friend, um, my friend Brian won a guitar at one booth. Uh, it's, it's insane. And my, but my friend Kat, when she went last year, Hey Kat, uh, she went on a mission. She knew a company she wanted to talk to. She wasn't playing no games with these people. It was like, Hey, I want to talk to these like eight companies and that's it. If I find somebody else in between, so be it. But these eight companies are all I want to talk to. And that's what she did. Uh, me, I, I really don't have a choice. I cover myself when I go down there. So my job really doesn't have a say on who I talk to or what I do when I'm there. Uh, their only agreement with me is that I don't have to take time off. So I go to the seven days in Vegas and I still get paid. But they don't have a say on what courses I take, who I go with. Uh, if I take courses or not, who I talk to, they have no say, which is fine by me. Uh, so the expo hall is, it's a lot. And I will say, I am grateful that they have quiet rooms because I can, I can't even imagine what it's like to have a sensory issue and be in the expo hall. One time I was so deep in there, I could not figure out how to get out. I found this guy who was six foot seven and I was like, Hey, which way is out because I cannot physically see it. And he looked around, he pointed out, go that way and you'll see the exit. And I found it. So thank you to that dude. But it is a lot going on. And then you have, for the past couple of years, they've done tattoos and piercings. I don't know if you have to pay for those. So if you ever gotten a tattoo or a piercing at reInvent, comment down below about tattoos and piercings and whether or not you have to actually pay extra for those. Uh, then... There's also a party uh, called Replay. Replay is held at the Las Vegas Festival grounds. There's food, there's drinks. And please understand anytime I say drinks, I am including alcohol. There is free alcohol throughout most of this event. Hey, do what you do. Just understand if your company's paying for it, you are representing your company. And if word gets out that you got sloppy drunken in Vegas, or rusted, they're not paying for you, and you could get fired. So be good, y'all. If your company's paying for it, you got to be good. But the LA Festival Grounds, there are three uh, huge tents. There's a live band, a DJ, and games. Live band is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, a DJ is usually um, top-tier known DJs. Last year, it was Major Laser who performed. I... The only time I'd heard of Major Laser was due the Netflix uh, Fire Festival documentary. Uh, my friend Kat was there and she was like, she loved that group. And I was like, I really don't know. She said, trust me, you know Major Laser. You don't know that you know Major, Major Laser, but you know Major Laser. She's like, trust me. Let's go. She said, if you stay, you'll remember. She was right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize how many Major Laser songs that I knew. But I never knew the band. I think I might have gotten mixed up with that other one. That Dave Getta, Dave. Y'all know what I'm want to talk about. David's get something with the G. I think I might have gotten some of Major Lazer stuff mixed up with his. One year it was DJ Skrilla. One year it was DJ Skrilla. So it's usually some big name DJ. Now the play booth is pretty much like office chair relay racing. One year they had a humongous ball pit 
uh, an inflatable, uh, humongous slide, a maze, uh, archery dots. I mean, archery darts, not dots, archery darts, which I will never get in there before and never get in that thing ever again because I swear everybody was aiming for my backside and it was not fun to be shot at uh, that many times. Uh, and then it's also dodgeball. Another game I'm not gonna play like ever. I don't. I don't. I have enough school experience with dodgeball to realize I was not built for dodgeball. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm just way too big of a target. I'm too big of a target. Okay. Just no. Uh. Uh-uh, uh. I'm not doing it. So replay is a lot of fun. That's usually Thursday night, and you have a blast. There are buses that takes you from uh the hotel to a uh, replay. They usually pick up in like a central location. Like they usually pick up like here for Hera and Caesar and the Link. And then you have one that kind of picks up around here. And then another one that kind of picks up uh, down here. Uh, so they'll say, hey, meet us at one of these central locations. We will take you there. And then the buses run, I think it's 30 minutes after the event ends. So there's always a, a line and the ho- the the bus has a piece of paper that says, these are the hotels that I'm stopping for. And you get on, you go back. Now, if you're kind of in between and you're not quite sure where to go, in between the Link and the Caesar, there's this bridge on top where a, tr- a monorail goes through. Uh, if you come through with your AWS credentials, which you have to have, to attend, you cannot just walk up in there saying you were AWS. You need to have your creds. And that's just a little plastic thing with AWS reInvent with a picture of your name on it that they can scan. Uh, if you have that, they will give you a free pass for the monorail. And the monorail will take you where you need to be. And they tell you to get off. I think it's like the Sahara. You get off there and they'll take you and you can walk to the festival grounds. And there's always somebody there with like a reInvent flag on their back. It's just telling you, like, go that way, go that way, go that way. You you won't get lost. I've done it once. And that was the first time actually riding the monorail. Uh, so that's that's insane. Uh, also, uh, go to the, even though you get your badge at the airport, I would still say go to the registration desk at um, the Venetian. The reason why is that there's uh, usually a sweatshirt for you to get uh, and some extra swag in case you need it. Well, not in case you need it, but you pay for it. Get the swag you pay for. And there's always like the buttons that like in Espanol, in Espanol, uh, tell what language you speak or your gender pronouns, uh, things like that. And just like some really cool pins that you can get and you can collect and even trade. Uh, so I always end up getting a couple pins from there uh, and, so, and a water bottle. Usually they were plastic. This year they gave us like the hardcore, like metal ones that were really, really great to keep cold stuff in. So uh, do visit that one. If you are certified, if you are AWS certified, uh, please come and go to the, uh, to the lounge. There's usually a couple things you can get in there. Uh, you can get the little Lego men. Uh, you can do the paint by numbers wall, which was a lot of fun. Uh, there's some food and some drinks in there. Uh, visit, just come and just visit just once. I mean, you got the certification. It's one of the few things you can actually uh, flex with it. Uh, if you're wondering, I currently have five certifications. Uh, I, I sound like an overachiever, but in reality, I just keep redoing the professionals, which then automatically give me the associates. So that's why I end up with five. It's not really the flex you think it is. Uh, now, uh, the buses. The buses, uh, usually there is a walking path between these top four hotels, so you don't need a bus. Uh, however, each one of these has a bus to the uh, MGM, and it has a, and each one of these has a bus to um, the Mandalay Bay and back. Now, when that bus says, I go to the Caesar and Mandalay Bay, that's all they do. They're not going to stop at the MGM. If you were hoping that's going to stop at the MGM, you were sadly mistaken. That bus only has two stops. MGM, Caesar, I'm sorry, Mandalay Bay and Caesar, and that's it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, it's up to you to pay attention to what bus you are getting on. 
There's nothing worse to hear somebody all upset because they got on the wrong bus, even though the bus says it right there, Caesar Mandalay Bay, Caesar Mandalay Bay. I don't understand how that happened, but it does happen because people are just busy and and trying to just move and just go and go and go and go and go. So please pay attention. Another thing to do is please make sure you make breakfast and, breakfast and lunch. Remember, that $2,100 you paid for your registration, pay for that breakfast and lunch. And understand that they are all the same across all the hotels. Every single one of these hotels serve breakfast and lunch. Well, they serve breakfast five days a week, Monday through Friday, and they serve lunch four days a week. And they're all the same. Uh, my friend who went last year, she I think she was at um, the Caesars. I was at the Mandalay Bay. I asked her, hey, what does lunch look like over there? She was like, oh. And then when she named the stuff they had, I was like, oh, it's the same exact thing. So go there. They're usually herding cattle. <laughs> They're trying to direct you all to the one in the back because they're trying to get rid of the food in the back before the front because they know that we would most likely stop at the first place we saw with food. They're blocking you off and saying, no, go further back. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. They try to have a wider range of food. They try to have vegan and vegetarian and everything else you can think of. Now, if you are running short on time, and I'm only saying this, if you are actually running short on time, if you look under the table, there are those carry out containers that you can like push it down and like get the flap underneath and take it with you. Only do that if you are running out of time. Do not do that just to sit down at a table and still eat it. I will literally be ticked off at you for doing that because you're wasting precious resources when they have plates there. It's like you're just trying to have it to have it. If you are rushing and you know you need to get that food and you're straight on the bus, get the container, walk out. Uh, another thing is uh, lunch. There are two options for lunch. There's buffet style, where there's a huge line of food. You grab what you want, you walk away. Now, I noticed at the Caesar that they will bring your drink. They won't just let you, let you grab like a soda or something. Or usually, most of them, there's like a a big bin of sodas and then there's like some coffee and some tea and you can just get what you want. But at Caesars, they're kind of coming to your table. It's like, Hey, what would you like to drink? I'm thinking to myself, great. It's going to take you 45 minutes to give me my drink now because there are about 300 people in here. Honestly, I can get it myself, but I digress. Uh, you have the buffet style for lunch and then you have box lunches. Box lunches are usually a salad, a sandwich or a wrap and it's in a little box container with the handle on it and if you open it up inside they're usually like a cookie a brownie a apple uh some like side salad or some chips and then you can grab a soda on the way out and then you can run and take your food with you uh to the next thing i've actually get got lunch i've grabbed one of those box lunches and then sat in the reserve line waiting to go into the thing ate my lunch right there do it if you have to. Uh, also, if you get a chance. So, yes, I'm sorry. If you if you do go to the re-event, please make sure you get your money's worth and eat lunch and breakfast on them. You will spend enough time at dinner in Vegas. Now, if, my, if I'm telling you not to take carry-out containers and plastic containers and get yourself some dinner for later, I'm not going to tell you not to do that. I'm just not going to tell you not to do that. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. If you want to do that, do that. Take you some plastic and Tupperware. Put some stuff in Tupperware. If they don't see you, I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to snitch. Because, hey, you might be coming to Vegas on a budget. I'm not going to judge you for that. Do you, boo-boo. Do you. Uh, one tip that I have is to get to where you need to be before you do something. What does that mean? Let's say you want to go get lunch. You're in Mandalay Bay, down here. Your next course is now in an hour, and you need to go to the MGM Grand. But you want to get lunch. Get on the bus to MGM Grand, and then get your lunch. Get to where you need to be before you do what you have to do. The reason why I'm telling you this is because you may have a hard time finding your next course. Uh, the buses may get delayed. Uh, you, 
you you may just have to go to the restroom. Uh, the lunch line may be long. It's better to get to where you need to be and then do what you have to do. Uh, as I said in my last video, you need to be in line if you are reserved. You need to be there 15 minutes early because that's when they start letting you in. So if your class is at 1 in the afternoon, they start letting reserves in at 12.45. You need to be in that line. This is not a joke. This is not a game. Be in line. They will badge you in. And I've done this. I've gotten badged in. I said to the person, hey, I need to go to the ladies' room. I want to be right back, but you've badged me in. They said, cool. And I make sure I make eye contact with this person because I do have an average face. I know I have an average face. I know it's because I look like my mom and my sisters. It is very easy to forget this or to see five other girls who look like this. It's very easy. I'm not dumb. Don't ever mistake me for being dumb. So, I always make eye contact with the person. Hey, I'm just going to run to the restroom. You've already bashed me in. So I And they said, okay, that's great. I put my stuff down in that room. I run and I do what I have to do because I already bashed. And that way, if they stop me, I can say, hey, you bashed me in. And they can check and see that I was already bashed in. I still have my seat. Now, what happens if you're reserved and you come up late? Let's say you come in. It's a 1 o'clock class. You come in 12.50. They will tell you to get to the end of the waitlist line because they have now started in letting in waitlist people in your late. They, we, we warned you to be here 15 minutes early. You are 10 minutes early, so therefore you are late. You have given up your reserve spot to a waitlisted person, and now you have to get at the end of the waitlist line and pray that you can still get in. And some of them waitlist people have been in that line for an hour waiting for that class to start. Two hours if it's a workshop. And that's just how it rolls. So that's why I say get to where you need to be first, then do what you have to do. If it takes me 30 minutes to get someplace, I know I got 15 minutes to go to the restroom, go get food, find the find where the class is actually being held. I got 15 minutes to get this done. That's why I say most of the time you're what I call hoofing it. <laughs> You were trying to get through. Okay. Uh, another thing that they have is the keynotes. There is no such thing as a full keynote. Because what happens is if the Venetian hall is full, well, what happens is they tell you that, hey, we have an overflow room. And the overflow room will have the keynote on a huge screen. And then you're sitting at a table. I actually like the overflow room, which is actually pretty sad because I was able to set up my laptop, plug in my, plug in my computer, do some stuff. You know, uh, as you guys know, I do a movie blog. I was able to do stuff on my movie blog while I was watching the keynote. When you're actually in the hall with the keynote, you are in there like a sardine. You are like this. The whole time. I'm telling I end up leaning forward because I'm not a small girl. I know that I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not a small girl. You know, I'm between a size 16 and 18. So I usually have to squish up. And if you've ever been in the conference center chair, you, you know, those things are like, for it's like a size eight or smaller. You know, I, I know I need this weight. You don't have to put it in the comments. I already know that. And that, my doctor tells me that all the time, but you have to understand if you're in that conference room, I mean, I'm sorry, if you're in that, um, if you're in the keynote, you are going to feel like you're a little squished in uh, and you really have to just go what they tell you. Once again, they're herding cattle. So they're telling you where to sit because if it was me, I would sit up front on the edge. That way I have a little bit more extra room on the side to kind of just like position my body and move my body around. But it's not. They usually got people like directed traffic with those little glow sticks. And then telling you which way to go and do this. And they'll, and they'll block off things and tell you to keep going down, down, down. Because they're just trying to fill it in. They're trying to make sure everything filled out. Now, I have noticed lately that they've been putting attendees in the back and putting reporters up front. Because there are tables there for them to set up their laptop and then pretty much tweet or write a report about what they're reading and things like that. That's a little annoying to me. But business is business. Because I, I prefer to sit up front. Now, where I can get good screenshots 
of like what they're talking about and that way I can share it. Uh, one thing I would tell you to do is if you do have your laptop, there's always a link to the keynote. I would say send it to people that you work with because they may be able to see the value in what you're doing if you send them the link to the keynote so they can watch it. I've done that for my company a couple times. They actually called everybody into the room so they can watch the keynote and they were like <laughs> live chatting on Slack about what they were saying, which was hilarious. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that if you take a workshop, it will usually tell you in the description if you need your laptop and any software that you need. Most of the software is all AWS tools. When they say, hey, we want you to use an IED, we're going to use Cloud Shell 9. So they're going to use their own AWS IED. Uh, so you end up using a lot of AWS brand stuff, but then sometimes they will tell you, hey, you need Xcode. I made the mistake and I did not like download Xcode in time. And so I'm sitting in the workshop and it took the entire workshop for Xcode to download. By then the workshop was over. All I can do was read the instructions. Uh, the instructions are available later in labs and you can like look through it later and kind of play around with it if you want to. I would say do that as well as copying any GitHub links they give you because the workshops, you're so busy just trying to get through it that you may not catch all the little nuances in it. So by keeping the GitHub address as well as uh, finding the lab later, you can sort of look at their code and play around with it and get, get an idea of what's up. Uh, another thing that I would tell you to do, I'm kind of looking at the schedule, uh, go to keynotes, go to the expo hall, uh, go to replay, have a good time, any co co um, corporate sponsored parties, go to it. They're, they're actually a lot of fun. You can make some good connections. Uh, don't, don't be afraid to have some fun in Vegas. Uh, also, oh, there's also a, usually a three to 5K walk slash run. So all them people out there doing that in Vegas at like six, five, six a.m. I have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I have seen y'all with these numbers on doing that run and then coming to, to a class. I was smooth beating bed. Now I know you do have to pay to be a part of it because it's for charity. Hey, like I said, nothing but respect. Uh, I think they all met at the Mandalay Bay and they went on their run. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, is there anything else you may have to pay for? If you want to do any um, certification prep, that's going to cost you some money to do the certification prep. And it's exactly what it sounds like. If you want to get certified and you want to prep for the course, you can go ahead and do it there. Do it, there. it will cost you money. You can actually get certified there and take the exam. Uh, that will cost you money. Of course, they're not playing around with y'all. You probably can use your code and get 50% off the exam. Um, hey, get certified. I, I I actually like being certified, even though I said having five is not a flex because I'm just redoing two of them. Uh, but it, it is nice to be certified. It is nice on your resume to be certified in something. If it's not AWS, go get certified in Google. Go get certified in something, especially in the tech industry. Uh, sometimes a uh, certification gets you further than the degree. That's it's sad, but it's true. Certification gets you further than the degree in this business. Uh, also, most of the events on Monday and around four o'clock, so that people can attend Monday Night Live and the Expo Happy Hour uh, events on Thursday usually ends around six to give everybody enough time to go back to the hotel and change for replay. That's at seven on Thursday. And please understand there is a bag size limit to replay. Uh, I think it's like fanny pack size. Now, luckily one of the, one of the vendors were actually giving away fanny packs. So I actually use that. Uh, and now some people will let you get on the bus with that. And there is a bag coat check, but some people will, won't even let you get on the bus with the bag on. So it's, it's pretty much at the person's discretion. But I'm telling you right now, get a fanny pack. Wear the fanny pack. Take the fanny pack with you. And most courses end on Friday by noon. Uh, that way you have the rest of Friday to yourself. You can either leave that afternoon. I would say the latest you should probably get a flight. It's probably a 3 p.m. flight. I usually take a night flight just so I can be home Saturday morning. 
and, and just have Saturday at home in bed and then spend Sunday taking care of anything around the house. Uh, you know, use this time to make contacts. It's okay to actually make business contacts while you're there. That's part of the reason why you're there. Uh, if there's any research groups, I would say join if they send you an invite. Uh, does sometimes they'll say you, hey, here's an invite for the Venetian party I went to. They say, here's an invite. Just forward it to anybody else you know might want to come. And then forward it to my coworkers. And they all came and they all had a good time. Uh, don't be afraid to ask questions in the breakout session. Just wait till the end. Don't do it during, wait till the end. Uh, you can ask questions on the builder sessions at any time, uh, labs uh, and workshops at any time. It doesn't matter. Uh, chalk talks, I would say leave it for the group. And I think that's all the tips that I have for you guys about what to do when you are there. Uh, once again, you can register at the airport, go to the registration desk still at reInvent so you can get your swag. Go to the expo hall. Oh yeah, if you do get swag at the expo hall, you have two options. Number one, you can mail it back to yourself. There is a FedEx in the Venetian, but please understand it is not cheap. Not only are you paying for the fact that it's a FedEx and not a USPS, you're also paying for the fact that you're in the Venetian and you're also paying for the fact that you're in Vegas. So something that may cost you $50 at home is gonna cost you 100. It's not cheap. Or if you have two check, if you can do two check bags, have one that's full of clothes and come with one that's empty. That's what I did. And I put all my stuff in my check bag, in my second check bag. And I actually left with it. Uh, so yes, uh, have a way to get your, your swag home. Uh, then uh, make sure you attend as much as you can. Keynotes, expos, uh, you don't have to be so bogged down with classes. And uh, make sure you give, make sure you come on Sunday. Don't come on Monday. It'll be too much to kind of handle going to classes and trying to check into a hotel and trying to handle your luggage and trying to handle your bag with all your stuff. It's just too much. Come on a Sunday. Uh, make sure you eat your lunch and your breakfast. You pay for it. It was a party of $2,400. It was a party of $2,100. Please don't let them skip out on you. Oh, also, I forgot. In between courses, they actually serve snacks in the hall. Once you leave a course, you may go out there. You might see there's hummus and carrots or chips and dip or macaroons and, or brownies and cakes. And there's always tea and water and coffee. You know, get something. You know, it's, it's there to give you some energy, give you some oomph. Don't, don't be afraid. Go get you something. You pay for this. Don't forget that. You are not being greedy. You are not being a glut. You pay for it. Okay? Don't don't let nobody discourage you. Uh, get to where you need to be before you do what you have to do. Biggest tip I can give you about all this. Get to where you need to be before you do ha what you have to do. Okay? Uh, don't be an escabump. Don't be an escalump. If you are on the escalator, you're not in a rush. Stand on the right side. If you are on the escalator and you are in a rush, walk up the left. And once you get to the bottom or the top, move out the way. Okay? Move out the way. All right? Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that comes to mind. If you're certified, go to the certified lounge, get your swag. If there's a party, go. You got certified for a reason. Enjoy the perks of being certified. Um, do If you want to do the walk slash run, please, by all means, nothing but respect. Go do it. Have fun. Uh, some of y'all can't live without that walk in the morning. I know I work with somebody like that. By all means, get it in. All right? And make sure you learn something. What's the point of coming if you didn't learn something? You know? <laughs> I know, I know, I know I'm crazy. I but once again, there's your map. Please understand that these orange ones are the learning hotels that you can actually sleep in. The blue ones are the sleeping hotels. What they mean by sleeping is that they arrange to deal with them to give you a lower price. Please make sure that you can't get a lower price on your own. One year was cheaper for me to get it through a card that I had than getting it through them. One year they were cheaper.
So price check, all that other good stuff. Uh, and enjoy Vegas. Go see a show. You know, go walk down the strip. Go to Fremont Street. Go zip lining. You know, go bungee jumping. I'm not going to stop you. All right, guys. In life, there's black and white. If um, With me, you get a shade of gray. If you have uh, any other tips or tricks for anybody going to reinvent, uh, let me know how long you've gone, how many times you went, and your tip for anybody. All right? Bye, guys. <laughs> See you at reinvent.